Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today we're talking about the magnificent James Madders Madison. Before we get into this one, if you are new around here, why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel because I'm closing in on 1,000 subscribers, the first milestone on this long Tottenham Hotspur journey. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. So as you can tell by the title, we are talking today about James Madison because... He started fantastically to his life at Tottenham. He has been a whirlwind signing. Honestly, when I go back to when we signed him and beat technically Newcastle to his signature for £40 million, or £30 million if you actually count the Harry Winks deal, because he cost 10 you know, 30 you know, that's how, that's how I judge it technically. But you think, even when I did one of my first videos back then and I called him the signing of the season. That was quite early on in the window, but I still think he is the signing of the summer, the signing of the transfer window, because when you actually measure it up compared to some of the other deals, like many people will say Declan Rice, and I'll be honest, he's a close second, but I think because of price, I the price for Rice, I, I feel like you can't say that is the signing of the summer, because... I feel like unless like if you're getting him for a better value, then that is a good that is that makes the signing even better. And the fact that we got James Madison for forty million pounds, that makes him already one of the best ones because for the output you're getting and the final piece to a jigsaw puzzle that I think he is, that makes you a fantastic signing. I mean, we have already seen he has scored two goals already and two assists. The two assists came against. Brentford and the two goals one came against um, Bournemouth away from home and what a fantastic finish it was Papa Matasar threaded him through he beat the line and slotted it into the keeper's right hand side and then the other one three on the edge of the area and he curls it in top corner what a player honestly he is like the second coming of Gaza. He is a Glenn Hoddle type he is our Ericsson replacement that we were dreaming of that we were praying would come one day and he has finally come and he's got the number 10 shirt he's now a vice captain and after Harry Kane leaving I don't think many Tottenham fans have looked back have they really because I feel like if we hadn't made the signing people would have been like mm, okay mm, we're not really sure what direction we're heading in but the signing of Madison has meant that he's one of our new talisman and he's shown already he has started on the front foot and I think he's fantastic honestly it is a shame that um, we will not get to see him properly play with Kane at club level, though. And as you can tell, obviously, by the angle of this video and the shirt I'm wearing, talking about England as well, because if England face some games this week, obviously, and Madison, when it comes to England, hasn't really been favoured by Gareth Southgate, which is quite confusing, um, considering how talented he is and how much he's involved in goal contributions. Looking ahead to future England teams, he has got to be starting. I'm sorry, he is the perfect player for that England team because, first of all, on a vibe level, I think like his personality and his aura is perfect for this England setup. You know, he backs himself. He's not too, he's not cocky. He's confident. And I think that really is a good trait to have in this England side with a lot of personalities. But also, he'll just make an impact. Like, the way we play in a 4-3-3, traditionally, you probably have a starting midfield is probably Declan Rice is a given. And I'd say at the moment, those two midfield spots are sort of up for grabs because Trent Alexander-Arnold has sort of played in that position. In the last couple of games, I looked at the lineups. It was Trent, Hendo and Rice. Hendo's got a big question mark over him because he's obviously moved to Saudi Arabia and, you know, should you really be playing for the England team if you play for Saudi Arabia? It's not a top league in Europe. Trent we're experimenting with, but James Madison is a proven Premier League midfielder who puts up good numbers. Surely he's the missing piece in this England side to be creative and link up with players like Kane, Rashford, Saka, whoever played that forward line. Be good on set pieces. You know, maybe... Like, you know, Rice plays in that six or that eight, and then maybe, I don't know, look, like, there's so many options you could play in that midfield, but I feel like Rice and Madison should really be the first names on the team sheet because 
Phil Foden. I mean, if we're comparing other people, because obviously them, they, they like Foden, Grealish play on the wing, and people might compare them. If you're going to go for an out and out eight, why not play James Madison? He's perfect for that role. And that's why I believe, like you probably read in the title, James Madison is not only the missing piece and a very key player for Tottenham, but I think he is now one of the key players for England. That's That side, apart from maybe Harry Kane, probably Jordan Pickford, and now Saka, all those positions are up for grabs. Not one of those other positions is a given. There's a lot of key battles in there. So James Madison has to now show and do what he's done at Premier League level for Leicester and Tottenham, get into the England squad, and then get into the starting lineup, and then show what he's worth. Because he just needs a chance, and I don't think he's been given a proper chance at England by Gareth Southgate for some unbeknown reason. But I feel like these two games coming up against Scotland and Ukraine, I believe, are the perfect two fixtures for him to get minutes and show what he's worth. Like, he has come into Tottenham, as I say, and absolutely set the place alight. And he's already had four goal contributions, which, you know, considering the amount of pressure and, you know, on Twitter and social media that players get when they make a move, he's really, it's been like a duck to water. I can't hammer home. If you haven't watched him already, I don't know where you've been. He has been all over and he just... I didn't think he'd do this because, obviously, when I look at our new setup, it's I thought Basuma and then obviously when Bentacor comes back, they'd be the ones dictating it. But he is just taking the ball from deep. His dribbling is fantastic. He keeps the ball so so well, and I just feel like so many teams slept on him this summer. I feel like he could start over Kai Havertz in that Arsenal team. He could play for Chelsea. He could play for Man United instead of Mason Mount. Maybe he could even squeeze into that Manchester City side. I could see that happening. And even Liverpool. I feel like, you know, it's a toss-up between him and maybe Sabozlai. But I think that's possible. And before we finish this video off, I want to highlight um, some comments and tweets that were going around at the weekend about Chelsea basically missing the opportunity to sign him because James Madison did not fit the profile of age they were looking for because he's not 25. He's 26. So, yeah, Chelsea, I'd, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it was good you probably missed out on him because it meant we have him, which is fantastic. And, you know, I believe James Madison is one of the best creative midfielders now in the Premier League. And he's at a team that is going to thrive with this attacking football. And it's just going to be an absolute pleasure to watch and see. So there are my thoughts on James Madison for club and for country. Let me know in the comments down below. How highly do you rate James Madison? How have you enjoyed him so far at Tottenham? Do you agree with what I've said about him at international level? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And before I go, as I said at the beginning, if you are new around here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for every time I go live. As I say, I'm closing in on a thousand subs and I'd love you to join me on my Tottenham Hotspur journey or Tottenham Hotspur journey, whatever you want to call it. And as I say, I've been Sunny Talk Spurs and I'll see you again on the next one and a ciao.